This week, we talk about our trip to the SAE government industry meeting and how we're hoping to commonize confusing names for safety features. We also touch on our first impressions of the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid and take viewer questions next on Talking Car. Welcome to the show. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm Mike Monticello. So this week, we kind of have our own news. Jake and I have just gotten back from the SAE Government Industry Show, which is kind of a, a one-stop shopping of Society of Automotive Engineers, who sponsor the, the conference, um, engineers from academia and manufacturers, et cetera, government, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, EPA, policymakers, and industry. So all the manufacturers are there. It's held in conjunction with the Washington Auto Show. So everybody's kind of in one place. And and as we would expect, Jake, what were the big takeaways from the show? Well, obviously, we're still talking about autonomous driving, right? right. I mean, everyone's talking about autonomy. They're talking about, you know, how to implement it safely. When is it going to happen? Um, uh, just all of the pieces. I mean, we were talking a lot about the trying to break apart autonomy and figure out, like, you know, make it clear, you know, what's, what are the building blocks, what, what, what is really true autonomy. Um, but I think one of the interesting things was, so we had this round table, right? Yeah. And, and it was kind of like the, the so I, I was moderating it. There was like, and he was excellent. He was excellent. He was funny. I wouldn't yeah. know. I'm not part of your I think his, society. So. <laughs> I think his talking cars experience helped. It was really good. I think that helped. But I mean, it was like the world's longest talking cars. It went on for almost two hours. <laughs> and we were getting like questions and stuff like that. But one of the really interesting things that came out of it, because we were talking about not just like this march to autonomy, but like, do people care? Do right. people want this? And what is that going to mean? So and we've talked a bit about, you know, what is... What's that going to mean? Is it going to be this this topic future, or is it going to be great and whatnot? But what was it? The, the guy from uh, NADA, right? Yeah. The, so this was the vice chairman of the National Automotive Automotive Dealers Association, Wesley Lutz, and he said, right. So and he said, and, and we, we have questions about, you know, what is bringing people into the dealers? And kind of unprompted, he's like, well, there's two things: they're right. bringing people and buying cars, because we're like, you know, 18 million, you know, cars were bought last year. So, I mean, we're a record really high levels of, of, of car uh, uh, purchasing. And he said, what's well, bringing, coming in the dealers, people are coming in because the increased fuel economy, which we, we talk about, right. but also the safety features. They're seeing that as a big reason to come in and buy this car. Not so much, you know, autonomy. Right. And, and right. there's not, not yet. There's, no car has autonomy. Right. And, and, you know, they, they were talking about different things. Like only 10% of the people really want a car that's autonomous or they feel safe. Uh, about you know having a car that's on the road tons but really it's the safety features yeah yeah and and with that we kind of took the opportunity with all these players in the room to kind of pitch an idea that we've been talking about and we want to share with you about would it be beneficial so so Jake said people are coming in for safety features and we're talking automatic emergency braking and forward collision right. warning blind spot warning those kinds of things is that we hope yes so they're yes. saying i want safety I don't even think the consumers know exactly what they want. They just know that the stuff is out there and they want to get it, but what is it? So this initiative we've been talking about is, wouldn't it be great if we could call these things the same things? Right. At least at the building block level. Well, it's, um, it's funny because we actually, you know, we've been struggling with that ourselves right. because the manufacturers call these things so many different names. Right. So we actually, as a group, came up with uh, you know, we kind of voted on, we made this mm -hmm. big document, voted on what's, what's the best way to call blind spot warning or blind spot monitoring or blind spot assist, all right. these different things. And so we, we worked on that because it's like I made this list or I have this list of all the different ways things are called. Right. And I mean, just well, like if you guys could see this spreadsheet. Yeah, <laughs> you should see. I mean, I can barely read it. But for like automatic emergency braking, which is one of the things we really harp on. That right. We think all cars should have standard. It's confusing for the for the um, regular buyer to go in and know what they're getting. Right? right. And so, I mean, like now or even in the recent past, there's collision mitigation braking, pre-sense front, pre-sense city, frontal collision warning, low speed autom forward automatic emergency braking. Pre-collision assist, uh, you know, 
intelligent brake assist, collision prevention <laughs> assist plus. On. There's, you know, so how do you know right. what you're really getting? And what's interesting is that, like, so you look, and this isn't the first time something like this has happened. We saw this before with stability control. So we were like huge proponents of stability control back right. in 1999 when we start, started seeing it. And we, you know, tried to work with the manufacturers, like, can't you just call it the same thing? And it, we never got there. You know, it was dynamic, enhanced traction plus, and, and tele, whatever, you know. Uh, Right. Well, so GM, we would like to avoid that. It, I mean, now, eventually right. it became in 2012. It became standard and kind of went right. away. But right. but good luck if you're looking for a used car and trying to figure out whether or not it's stability control or not. Right. Right. So so we kind of pitched this idea of let's try and commonize. And it was a great analogy in the meeting of generic drug names or the base drug names and the marketed names. And we recognize we don't want to mess with their marketing. But we said ibuprofen is ibuprofen. You can call it Advil, you can call it Motrin, and, and right. you can market it. But when somebody clicks on it, ultimately they say, it's ibuprofen. Oh, I know what I'm getting. So we thought we'd play a little game here about not only what oh. the packages, I'm channeling my inner letterman, I've got my <laughs> cards, about what some of the packages are called and what are the components in them and see if we can kind of figure it out ourselves. So the first one I had here is driver confidence package. When we say that, and we may know some of these, you know, so we're well, well, playing with or, the viewers or, or, or as well. What, what could it be? What right? could so it driver be? confidence yeah. package, that, that's easy. That's a lift yeah. kit for your truck, right? Right. Because I mean, <laughs> so you can drive over stuff. Well, right. I would have more confidence, you yeah. know, if I had, you know, the 33 inch wheels and you know, right. tires. And or it's just a sense of self, like you're going to, you know, it's a, it's a streaming uh, tape that tells you, you know, you're, you're, you're good today. You're, you're good. important. You're special. <laughs> so driver confidence is a General Motors Chevrolet. That's their safety package, right. their driver confidence package. Right. And it does include the things we talk about that we want. Forward collision alert, not consistent necessarily. <laughs> Low speed front automatic braking. And there's actually a driver confidence one and two. So when you add the two, you so get it's high more speed. Confusing. So it's a little but more confusing. But we're going to hold on to those points, right? I mean, automatic braking. It doesn't brake automatically in all situations. Right. It's only in emergency situations. That's right. We call it AEB, which a lot of people call it, but they're not even calling the components, the ingredients, the same thing. Right. So the recipe, the, the generic drug, not the same. So right. we were laughing. <laughs> City safety. An alarm system. Alarm system. Yeah. Could City be safety, something like that's that. That's important. Again, automatic emergency braking and, this is Volvo, forward collision warning. So they've got the ingredients right. Eyesight. Just, I mean, I have 2015 vision. So I'm good. I'm good. It's a windshield that actually is a lens that helps you see well, just, better. You know, windshield washer cleaner. You yeah. Know? I mean, that would be helpful. It's all yeah. about vision. I mean, and, and this that's is what it this is equal is opportunity making fun of of all the manufacturers. We are. We're not They're picking, all doing We're not trying it. to pick on them. They all have their special little <clears throat> right. uh, suites of safety systems. And not only is it confusing uh, what the the suite. Right. You know, has in it, but then it's even confusing when you look at, at what it is comprised of, and you're right. like, I don't know what these things are. I think Eyesight would be a great name for the LED headlight package. There you go. Wouldn't that be? Yes, yeah. it would be. I mean, just like and that's amazing high beam vision. headlights. Would it doesn't be necessarily imply safety, and it does right. have pre collision braking. Again, not automatic emergency braking, which we would prefer lane departure warning, lane keeping assist. I, and we like Eyesight. This is Subaru's version. And I will say, really Subaru's like somehow done a good job with that one because it seems like a lot of people actually know what Eyesight is and, and they it want includes. it, you know? Yeah. That's right. Acura watch. It's right like here. An Apple watch. Right here. Yeah, well, <laughs> not, not my cheap thing. Jake's got the fancy one. And there's Honda yeah. watch and Acura watch. I also think this implies some sort of vis vision benefit. Well, Honda is more Honda. It's Honda sensing, right? It's Acura watch and Honda, Honda sensing. sensing well, right. What is it exactly sensing? It's very sensitive. Right. It's a sensitive <laughs> car. That's, right. that's important. And finally, one that we really like is safety sense. That's Toyota, really a broad name. Now, what is Safety Sense? And it does include a number of things. Well, there's we, we well, Toyota them. Safety Sense P. I mean, if you do the full right. thing, you're like, there's different I versions don't even of Safety Sense that, that have different ingredients. Right. Safety Sense P includes some pedestrian detection. That's my deciphering. That's TSSC much better than what I was thinking. is Just the base. <laughs> is the base version. It does have a pre-collision system, which is their automatic emergency braking. Um, Auto high beams, things like that. So yeah. So, but, well, but again, like you know, pre-collision system. Right. Yeah. That, wow, that could be. It could yeah, be. It could be the belt tightening belt. up. It right. could be you know Call just getting one. the brakes ready to go on. You know. Uh, so there's so many things it could be. Right. And it's even confusing when you look at you know a car's Monroni, the window sticker, and you're trying to figure out what. Okay, what really is that? You know, 
And I think that's what we're saying. Yeah. At that level, right. wouldn't it be great if the so names So let me ask same? you this. Since, I, like I said, I'm not in your secret society. Yeah. They need a, like a society of automotive journals or like SAJ or something like right. that. Since you guys so won't let me into your society. So what was the takeaway? You guys presented this and we you said, presented this. you know, we, we think there should be common nomenclature. Right. Uh, were the manufacturers, you know. They were represented by okay. the Automotive, automotive um, Alliance and the Global Automotive Alliance. And there wasn't a, you guys are nuts, this is never going to happen. Okay. And I That's think good. the balance is, you may still see those words, Acura Watch, Toyota Safety Sense. But there was kind of a sense that it might be okay to call the components the same thing. I think it's in their best interest if it was all called the same thing. Right. Well, so, that's what we say. And, you know, so, and, and we're not saying, like I said, we as a group came up with what we're going to call these going right. forwards. We're not going to use the manufacturer's names for the most part. We're going to, you know, call yep. forward collision warning. We're going to call it FCW or forward collision warning. Yep. Automatic emergency braking. Right. Blind spot warning, not blind spot assist or anything like that. So we right. just came up with what we thought was the most descriptive. Right. Uh, but I think it would be in their best interest if they came up with kind of like electronic stability control. Everyone knows what, or even ABS. That's something that everyone knows right. what anti-lock brakes that are. That didn't right? seem to get caught in. Anti-lock brakes were anti-lock brakes. A ABS. So yeah. if, if, if they did that, I think it would be better for them because then people right. would know, okay, they don't know what Acura Watch is, but it, when they look on the window sticker right. and see what right. it is, and it says for a collision warning automatic, oh, okay, I know exactly what that is. Right. So we actually did this. So we did. We actually created a list of kind of our names, lack of anyone else having them, and definitions, so people yeah. could check those out. So maybe a couple asks of our, of our viewers. One, take a look at those definitions. See if you think the names make sense. Look at the show notes below. There's a link to our definitions. See if they make sense. The other thing is, do you as consumers think that having those base definitions, regardless of what the packages are called that we threw on the floor, um, does that help you as a shopper? Um, leave a comment, or better yet, we've been asking for video. Send us a 30-second video, consumerreports.org slash talking cars. So we hope this gets some momentum. So next sec, new at the track, we have the Honda Clarity. It's really just in. I don't think I've even been in it. I haven't even been in it yet. So. Um, New Honda, we did have some experience with the Clarity fuel, fuel cell, cell version yeah. that, that we borrowed and had mm -hmm. some driving in, but impressions? Well, yeah, so the Clarity is kind of unique because there's three versions of it. You know, mm -hmm. there's a fuel cell, which we had here for a little bit, you know, we, we uh, rented from Honda, yep. and then there's a full electric, right. and then there's the plug-in hybrid, which is what we bought, and which we think for sure right. most people are going to buy that car. It's the, you know, the most normal in a sense. Yep. Um, you know, the fuel cell. There's not an infrastructure yet to, for that to work. Especially That's a problem, in Connecticut. Right? That's a problem. Uh, and the the full electric version only has, what, 89 miles of range 89, or something like right? that? Which is, so is that's well the EPA under. range, yep. These right. days, you know, it seems like you shouldn't come out with a full electric car unless you're going to be, you know, close to 200. Right. Yeah. Sure. So we bought the regular one, the plug-in plug -in hybrid. And, um, you know, it's it's not a bad driving car. It's It's got okay power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's what's nice about these kind of, you know, hybrids, plug-in hybrids like this is, it has this 47 miles or so of full right. electric advertise, range, yep. you know, unless you floor it. If you floor it, it's still going to become a regular right. hybrid, <laughs> and then the engine will kick on. It becomes much louder. Right. But um, so it has a really nice takeoff from a stop because it's just full electric, smooth power. There's no, you don't have to worry about a transmission doing anything weird or, yep. um, you know, the interior is actually really nice. It's got some really cool wood it's trim. Roomy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, the front and rear, a pretty decent room. The trunk is uh, kind of. Uh, not, it's not as large as you'd expect. Right. You know, there's some, some right. uh, compromises there. <clears throat> Which many hybrids have. Yeah, yep. but I, I didn't think it was a bad driving vehicle. You know, the, it's not a sporty vehicle by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so, 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 I, so I, 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 I've, I've driven it, and um, it was funny. I dropped off my kids uh, in the morning for ski club, and I had to throw a snowboard in and, uh -oh. and skis into it. And then I picked them up with the, our Hyundai Accent. <laughs> and the Hyundai Accent... It was so much easier to carry the snowboard and the skis ah, and that yeah, than and that the larger, part, yeah. far more expensive uh, Clarity. And, and I think that's what bothered me about it. Is it battery it. room that's so robbing? It's not even oh. the battery. It's, it's the kind, so you look at the car shape. and it's all kind of weird shaped. It almost looks like a, an overgrown Prius. Yep. But here's the problem. So like my wife has a 2006 Prius, which is a hatchback. And it's, so mm -hmm. it's been a hatchback for, for many years and the new generations are too. And it's very versatile, right? And so it looks different, which I obviously Clarity was trying to look different, and right. it's got these oh, funny things. It, it did that. It accomplished <laughs> that. I mean, it's got a big old rear end. You and know? it's covering up the rear wheel. 
people yeah. somehow getting the extra arrow out of it and whatnot. But what drives me nuts is even the thing looks like a hatchback, it's got this tiny little pass through that allows you to put uh, stuff up. So I'm like shoving the, skis you know, and, the skis and the snowboard in, yeah. whatever, in this pretty large car. And then I go pick up the accent and a giant pass through, no seat problem at all. Down. Seat folds down. Yeah. I'm like, Really? Well, I mean, I'm confused by the whole Honda, you know, uh, hybrid thing anyway. I mean, you've got the Insight coming out, you know, you've got a new version of the Insight, right. you've got this Clarity, you've mm -hmm. got an Accord hybrid. Right. I don't understand. Why, why all these different versions? Why not just come out with one good well, Prius I, I fighter? Feel, I, you know? I, feel like, I feel like Honda's got burned because, I mean, they came out with, you know, you know, cord, you know, hybrids, and they had Civic hybrids. I mean, pretty early on, right. nobody really noticed. Right. And I think it was that, you know, Prius looked different, and Prius was almost like a new brand mm -hmm. for Toyota, and it had the statement, and almost like, a, it was almost like a, you know, they, people were in, in California who were, you know, stars were driving around Priuses. It wasn't happening for the Civic for hybrid. Yeah. So they're trying to get, you know, clarity, which, you know, has this, you know, they, they've made fuel cells or thinking mm -hmm. fuel cells. It looks different. I don't know if it's going to work for them, though, because, I mean, they're not, it's it's not a practical car. It's not really, the design doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, for me, they've hit that Goldilocks, as you mentioned, between the range anxiety of, of all electric and the infrastructure <clears throat> inability of the fuel cell. I do think, like you but, say, that that backup and that peace of mind but, of having that gas But that's just it. being a plug-in hybrid. And there's other right. choices that and, aren't that popular. And right. look at the 40, It's 42 MPG combined EPA. So right. it's not like it's, you know, 52 like a right. like, uh, like a Prius, you right. know, or, or a Hyundai Ioniq. Or a Camry hybrid. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> it, it just doesn't seem like it makes a whole lot yeah. of sense. I think little things, too. They carried the, the push-button shifter and oh, the, oh, the yeah, screen. Yeah. So some of that it's stuff got, that we've the, already it's said got we didn't It's got the old touchscreen system. Right. Old touchscreen and the Unintuitive transmission. shifter. So. That's right. That's we'll right. see. So it's we'll got some issues. But yeah. like I said, we're going to have it for a while. We're going to put it through all of, all of our tests Pieces, and see yep. what happens. Right. So new here. So the next thing is we do have some viewer questions that you guys have sent in, and we'll talk about them. So first, wanted to know, according to CR, what is the definition of reliability? It seemed to be a, it seems to be a very vague term. Different testers could mean different things when it comes to reliability. Average reliability, according to many ratings, seems to be similar to excellent reliability 10 years ago. I'm going to throw this to Jake because he's the most, most attached sure, to that data. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, the definition of reliability for us at Consumer Reports is, is more cut and dry than I think other sources. And part of that reason is we're not talking about quality. Uh, other people yeah. talk about quality. We don't use that term mm -hmm. because people's idea of quality could be different things. Reliability is stuff that broke. Right. Is it working or is it not working? Did it actually break? And that's actually a very black and white type of it doesn't leave it to the consumer of, you know, do I like the way this thing works or not? Does it make a lot of noise or not? Does it ride poorly or not? We're not asking right. about They're that. They're not perceptions. They're, did you have to go get something fixed? Right. right. Now, yeah. that said, I mean, every time we're talking about new cars, we're comparing it to all the other new cars available. Mm -hmm. So it does make it a little bit difficult to compare to you know, 10 years ago. Well, I will tell you, I mean, spoiler alert, older cars have more problems than newer cars. <laughs> we'll just say that. Oh, wow. um, you know, we're, we're definitely looking at different ways so you can actually compare newer cars to your, new cars to yep. used cars. That's definitely something I think that's, that's worthwhile. But I will say that over the last five years, I mean, a lot of people are always ask, like, well, are new cars, you know, more reliable? Are all of them reliable? No, new cars do have a lot of problems. They're different kinds of problems, though. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of issues with, you know, electronics, uh, for sure, infotainment, and some of these new transmissions still have, well, now, have that, a lot of that, issues. The, the question, though, uh, had to do with, mentioned testers and stuff like that. I mean, did the person think that we are testing? Right, the, I, we're I, not, I, I was just going to say The reliability data thing. comes, you know, from right. uh, our subscribers. This is nothing right. to do with us. And, and, and to that point, I mean, we, we buy, you know, at least 50 cars every year, and sometimes they break on us. It has nothing to right. do with this. Right. This all has to come from all comes from our, our subscribers who are telling us what their problems were. With so their cars. With their cars. Right. And sometimes it's hundreds or even thousands of model, model years that are, that are giving that information. So we usually have over a, a half a million vehicles in our, in, in our survey every year. Right. So it's pretty, pretty comprehensive. Yeah. So 
Second, why do manufacturers avoid column mounted shifters? I had an 06 pilot and it was so useful having all of that freed up center console space, basically a big storage tray, where I could just throw all of my stuff. Seems like it made perfect ergonomic sense. Been looking around and can't find that in newer cars. Virtually all cars now seem to put the gear selector on the center console. Well, I, I'm sure Jake's gonna have a bunch to say about this, but yeah. I'll weigh in first. I think it's it's two things. I think, uh, well, there's two things that, go, that are going on. First of all, I think it's just not cool anymore to have the shifter right. out there. And secondly, we're noticing that they're also going away from what was cool for a while, which was the, the console mm -hmm. right. uh, shift lever. And now, like we just talked about, this unintuitive push button system that, you know, Honda and Acura have and, and other companies are doing. Right. Uh, or, you know, uh, Chrysler, uh, Ram, you know, have, they have uh, the, the dial that you do the shifter. So they're, they're still trying to, this kept uh, space clean. Right. Uh, they're now, now they're trying to, um, and then they had the console shifter here, so it wasn't clean anymore. Yep. But I think it also has to do with you know, everything is bucket seats these days. You know, you couldn't have, when you had a, a, um, right. a bench seat, bench the, right? Wow, you, you couldn't really have, <laughs> that's hurtful. Oh, sorry, sorry, just <clears throat> um, You can't have a, a console shifter, uh, right. you know, when you, with the bench seat, it just right. doesn't, and someone's got the shifter between. It's like, it's like a pickup in the old days with a bench seat, and you have manual, manual transmission, the person in the middle was like, had the shifter between their legs, you right. know? I would add two things, too. One, you touched on it. Everything's gone to electronic shifters. I mean, you don't have the cable and everything that has to run down first. And two, we've asked to put a lot more in that column. It's right. stuffed full of airbags. We want it to tilt. We want it to telescope. We want it to collapse in a crash. Maybe that real estate is actually more valuable for other things than... Well, but, 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 I mean, it doesn't stop you having a stock. And we still have cars. Right. I mean, the Tesla has a stock. That's a, that's a shift. Right. Right. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. so that doesn't make so it good. Just because so it's on the column no, doesn't so make it good. So what's going on, Jake? But, but, Tell but, us. But, but you're right. Uh-oh. I mean... Mark that down. I'm uh -oh. sorry. One time, Mike was right. But it's like, you know, here's the thing. It's like, obviously... I mean, we see all these crazy electronic shifters, right? With these little dip switches where you sit there and you have the, dip you know, switches. the magnifying glasses and right. a, and a and a, you know, tweezers trying to sh change the gears. Like, obviously, real estate is a premium. And then you get into this car and you've got this left stock, you know. And some of them, like everything's on the left stock because they still have this mindset of the shifters right. over here. Right. So you got a left There's stock like that's three a, things over here. Well, yeah. yeah, I drive at the you know expedition and it's like you know you got wipers and you got rear wiper and you got the turn <laughs> signal and you got all these other and things the, on there the and there's nothing over here. Point. Right. So I mean, it just makes sense ergonomically to do that rather than having some kind of weird contraption trying to change my gears. I mean, we're, I'm waiting for the uh, the gesture controls to put in reverse. That's that's next. Um, but why aren't they doing it? I mean, certainly, okay, fine, we don't have a bench. You don't have to do it, but it, it's smart. They should do that. I think, I think it's exactly what you said. It seems old. Yeah. Because yeah. that's why we're seeing these, a lot of these new, new shifters. We ask, they seem cool. why are you doing this? Right. Is it better? Is it easier? Well, no, it seems more modern. Is it safer? Right. No. Is it safer? No. no. Right. right. So it's like, it's just, it seems old, yeah. right? This clunk, clunk, clunk. It's a fashion thing. It, it is, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. It is unfortunate. Finally. 1999, my, my 1999 Toyota Solera V6 five-speed special order was destroyed in a crash. What are the current reliable manual car choices, you'll both love this, besides the new Accord and Civic? No European high maintenance options, please. Person doesn't like Euro cars. No, huh? no. So, so you did some homework. I did some homework. Uh, you, you know, I will say more than anything, what I find really annoying is mm -hmm. that you've got notes, I've got a bunch of notes. He's got no notes. He's not I, a note. It's, it's, it's annoying. In his it's annoying. <laughs> it must be nice to be that smart. But um, I just make it so up. I looked it up, and, and there's, there's actually a decent amount of manual cars still, but there really isn't anything that's that close to this person's, uh, you know, what basically right. is a Camry, was a Camry Coupe right. or right. convertible. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I like that they were really excited. They're really proud that they special ordered. That's kind of neat right. that they really wanted that yeah. manual. Well, that they went out for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are some, but, and, some of them, some of these cars, you, the caveat is that the manual transmission is only available on the lowest trim or the yeah. lowest trims. Yeah. But there are some that, uh, so we can't do Euro cars. Uh, I think the closest to, to uh, uh, that car, the, the Solara, would be maybe a Mazda 6, yeah. which you, you know, it's a, it's a little sportier than that Solara was, but you can get the manual transmission because Mazda does care about driving. You get it in the Sport and the Touring, but not the Grand Touring. You can only get the automatic up there. Um, Subaru Forester, you can get uh, the manual transmission in the 2.5i and the 2.5i Premium, but not on the Limited, the Touring, or the XT. 
Um, of course, my favorite, some of my favorite cars, Toyota 86 and Subaru BRZ. You know, right. for a Solera right. driver. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> He's not helpful. Um, He's not going to be. Mazda, 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 Mazda 3. Mazda, Mazda 3. You can, you know, like manual Mazda. transmissions. Yep. yep. Um, then there's some other ones like uh, Subaru Crosstrek. You can, uh, manual transmission comes standard on the 2.0i and the 2.i Premium, unavailable on limited. Hyundai Elantra. Uh, mm -hmm. It's standard on the uh, base SE and the Sport. But you can't get it on any of the other trims. Mm -hmm. So, so there's some, you know, there's some and, give and take there. Yeah, yeah and same thing. He, he doesn't want the Civic uh, or the Accord. I think the Accord's interesting because it's not just on the the base version. It's it's you can get it on the higher trims too, and you can't get it on a Camry anymore. That's maybe the big thing. Right. You can't get a manual transmission on his Camry. So here's the deal. So so 1999. Okay. I mean, here's the thing. Cars have gotten bigger and roomier yep. since then. So if you're talking about a Camry or a Solera in 1999, you're probably talking about a smaller car today that's at that size. So truly, I mean, like a Civic or something is, is going to suit this person. He said no Civic or she. Or right, she. right, but that's size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I a mean, compact right. car I mean, they is know the size of an inside Civic, right, right. To me, there is one, there's one car, and it's the Mazda 3 stick. That's the car. Yeah. Right. And I'll tell it's you why. It's a fantastic car. It, because it's a fantastic car and is a fantastic shifter. I mean, right. the shifting mechanism yeah. and the clutch is just so silky smooth. It just makes that vehicle a joy to drive. You could get the hatch. You could get... Yeah. It is just... The hatch makes it so practical. Yeah. The, the nice red that they painted. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. But, you know... I, and it's sporty, too. I mean, the Solera, right. I mean, again, yeah, okay, fine, it's not a two-door, but, I mean, right. again, there's a sporty thing about, I think, the, the Mazda 3. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were saying there was a sporty thing about the Solera. No. <laughs> um, I will also say, because it's a two-door, so it's a coupe. The, the, you know, the person's issues with the Euro cars was not uh, reliability, but uh, high maintenance costs, I right. think, was the issue. Right. But I do want to just say, you know, you can still get a BMW 3 Series right. and an Audi A4 with yep. manual transmissions, and that's very important. You know, who knows how long that will be the case because it is going away, but, uh, yeah. you know, more on more and more cars. Enjoy your Mazda 3. Well, for instance, yes. you can't get a manual <laughs> transmission on a Mazda CX-3 or a CX-5. And for a company like Mazda, that's kind of surprising. Well, it's kind of a loss. As we've talked about, it's a yeah. loss. If no and if the demand is If no there, one's buying them. Yeah. And, we, so, you know, we were joking. In my tap class, there was a young girl who said, I'm going to learn to You're drive what? a stick. In my tap dancing class. Okay. Don't look at me like okay. that. Okay. I tap. But anyway, she's young, 16, just getting away. She said, I'm going to learn to drive a stick. And her perception was, oh, it'll be much better fuel economy. And that kind of gap is closing. Well, so uh, it doesn't have the I'm already ship. teaching my son how to right. drive stick. And yeah. I'm telling you, his first car will be a stick. Right. And, and well, it's for, for safety. safety. Right. Because it makes it much harder yeah. to be distracted. It makes you much shift. harder to do that <laughs> stuff. That's, that is where it's at. So now, but you're, this, this young lady, she was doing it more just because she wants to know how to drive a manual? Yes, which I thought was because, great. And it's a very and similar I, reason. Because too. that's also funny because I think, you know, things like that are going away. We do less and less by hand. You know, driving a manual transmission is an art. Yes. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but heel and toe downshifting with a manual transmission is an art. That's a way of downshifting yep. and blipping the throttle. Look it up. Look it up on Google, folks. You can find it. <laughs> that was the first thing I wanted to do when I learned how to drive a car. Right. Was I had to figure out how to do heel and toe downshifting, and yeah. so I, you know, Brandon Lambert. Uh, Jake doesn't know country music, yes, but you do. I do. <laughs> she has a song, Automatic, and it talks about how no one's doing anything by hand anymore. Everything they want, everything fed to them, and and she has a line that she says. God knows that shifting gears ain't what it used to be. I learned to drive that 55 just like a queen three on the tree. Ah, and, I you know, that. that's really old school, I you know, three that. speed on the tree. Again, but yeah. um, I thought that was kind of interesting, yeah. you know, because for me, I think there is something to the art of driving a, driving a manual transmission. And, and it may come back into fashion. Yeah. Who knows? So we'll see. So thank you for watching. That's all we've got today. See you next time.